This is Mally Corrigan, writer and producer of The Alpines, and you're listening to the Indie Eye Film Awards Podcast. You are now listening to the NDI Film Awards Podcast. Welcome to the NDI Film Awards Podcast. I'm Matt. And I'm Dre. And we are back. Yay. For January of 2022. Happy New Year. I'm sure you've heard that a million times, everybody. Oh, yeah. But hey, yeah, we're first def- time we're seeing you guys or talking to you guys, so... But we hit you with a lot in December because we had our regular December episode. Yep. And awards. Then we had our annual awards for 2021. Which was all of the months. And then we hit you with six bonus episodes that were interviews that we had with NDI alum, various directors and actors. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I mean, it was cool for me because I didn't have to do all the editing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and we said last month... We, we, we've we mentioned this at least, that the last two weeks of December, for us, traditionally, yeah. we don't do anything. But hey, let's start a business and then do all sorts of extra things at the end of the year. I hadn't considered that. But usually, we don't have a lot of other obligations at the end of the year. So it's not that bad. But for us, professionally, with our regular gigs... It got extraordinarily busy, uncharacteristically busy. and We don't like, by the way. I know we talk about, oh my gosh, we've been so busy. We don't like it. It's not a badge of honor for us to be busy. It just has... No. Well, and we don't take vacations. We don't do anything extraordinary. We just constantly kind of work our art, quote unquote, which is our profession. Which is fun for us. The things that we do get to be fun. But we count on the last two weeks of the year to kind of switch it all off and enjoy family and Christmas and New Year and catch up on things and and do things we've been wanting to do all year. And we really didn't get that Mm -hmm. this year. We got like Christmas Day. (laughs) And we got New Year's Eve day, Maybe, and that yeah. was about it. Every, everything else was was working. So you know, hey, poor us. But um, but that's that's to say that we put out a lot of content recently for NDI. All these bonus episodes. Yeah. I highly encourage anybody if you're new to NDI, if you subscribe or if you uh, submitted for January of 2022, and you're just kind of finding out what we're about. I hope you go check out those. Bonus episodes with the interviews with other filmmakers. There's a ton of nuggets of good info in there. Yeah, and it's just, it's a great addition to this little community that we're building. So you can hear from these people and and, and learn from their experiences and mistakes and successes. And I've seen that the YouTube clicks and the podcast downloads, it's kind of exploding right now. So mm-hmm. I think word's gotten out, people are sharing and it's it's catching a wider audience, which is so helpful to anybody who's submitting to NDI because every month we just make this community a little bit bigger. So yeah. thank you all for supporting and sharing and listening to the podcast and the emails that I get, the DMs I get on Instagram, full of appreciation and support for what we're doing. It really encourages us, gives us a lot of enthusiasm to push forward and and helps in months like January of 2022, where the submissions were out of this world strong. So many. And we had so much to go through. Um, but a little bit of housekeeping, just some love, talking about the community here. Kevin Turner, who directed Beta, one of our uh, shorts that won a ton last year, yeah. won our short of the year. I mean, it got lots of love, but I, and I, and one of the bonus episodes is an interview with Kevin Turner, but he started his own podcast called Producers Corner on his Logic Films YouTube channel, and I highly recommend anybody checking that out. We're going to put the link in the description to this episode uh, for Logic Films YouTube channel, and go listen to Kevin talk about uh, filmmaking. It's it's He's really good. And this is just great information that's out there for you to get. And sticking on the topic of YouTube, our prolific filmmaker of the year from last year, Pride Pierce, one of our favorites, he started a YouTube project, and it's a horror reaction channel called Final Girls. 
well. girls with a Z, of course. <laughs> Um, and we're going to put that link in the description also. And this is a little, this is a fun idea. Um, it's got, it's a group of girls that are reacting to classic and, and modern and classic horror films. Um, so if you're a horror fan, it's a fun place to go to kind of relive these films or see it through the eyes of people who may be seeing these things for the first time. Uh, you know, discussion going on there. So Final Girls on YouTube, we'll have the link in the description. Check that out as well. I also wanted to mention that our Freedom Filmmaker of the Year, Rodney Roldan, will be playing Detective Mike Perez in an upcoming episode of American Detective, no which way. will air on February 9th on Discovery Plus. So, Which be- I'm a subscriber of. Yes, yes. Oh my. So check out Rodney Roldan in his turn uh, on American Detective on February 9th. So cool. And a little love for another alum of ours, director Jan Miller Coran, who submitted and won for best feature, Along Came Wanda, which stars Constance Brenneman, which I'll mention later in the podcast, and Kathy DeBono. Uh, Along Came Wanda is going to be available on Apple TV, and the pre orders are going to start on February 7th. So from February 7th through the 14th, you can get. The standard definition, which why would you ever do that? Or you can get the high definition <laughs> version of the film for four ninety nine as a pre order. That's a temporary price. After that, it's going to go up, um, and then a dollar of each sale is going to go to Lesbian Game Changers, which you can find out more about. Um, you can check them out on Instagram at Lesbian Game Changers. But most importantly, check out Along Came Wanda because uh, Jan did a fantastic job on the film. Yeah, we really liked that one. Um, and the cast is great. It's a fun watch. Yeah. And since I'm plugging everyone else, I'll also remind our audience that I have a podcast of my own now called Take 22, a media production podcast, which you can find places where you find podcasts. You can find it on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or I put a version of it up on YouTube, and that'll also be linked in the description. Um, and I've been I've been so busy shooting and editing and working, um, but there's a couple episodes there, so if you haven't heard it yet, you can catch up on that, and and hopefully I'll be able to record a new episode soon and talk about all this craziness that I'm doing that's not NDI uh, since last month. How busy I've been <laughs> working on media production. Um, outside of this. Um, and Take 22 is just a place where I can talk about real life, you know, in the field, media production, the type of gear I'm using, the type of work I'm doing and what I'm using for that work. And plus kind of telling the history of how I even got to do this professionally and make it a job. Which leads me to another plug for my feature film, Madison Baker Was Here, uh, which is on Amazon Prime Direct Video uh, I'll also have a link for that in the description. Will you now? <laughs> <laughs> and I've been inviting everyone to go check it out on Amazon, uh, rate it. You know, if, if there's people who think, uh, what is this guy doing talking about other people's films? What has he ever done? Well, this was the latest feature that I've done. And I invite anyone to go watch it, review it, and, and give me hell. I don't care what you say about <laughs> it. Tell me, tell me what you think about the film. Um, and I'll be talking more about Madison Baker was here on the Take 22 podcast. And I have some of the actors that were on there will be on Take 22. We've already recorded interviews. So you can learn more about the film uh, on Take 22, a media production podcast. Okay. Is the house clean yet? Yes. Okay. So we we flew through all that. I, I just, hey, I wanted to give some love to everybody because, our, again, our intent is to build this community and use this platform in ways that other film festivals just don't do. Yep. So we try to talk about the films. Uh, when I can, I'm talking about our alum and what they're doing. If I have the opportunity to plug something like a film being on Amazon Prime, yeah. you know, reach out to me and, and I'll let, email us at hello at indiefilmawards.com. If you have something you want us to say, I can't guarantee I'm going to get to everything. Right, but at least a, ask. Month. But but my intent is to promote those of you who are engaging with us. I think you've heard me mention the Alpines a few times. Just once or twice. Uh, so things like that, we're just trying to give love back. And speaking of love, 
I don't know what's going on, but we got hit with submissions for January. Yeah, it's like people took December and made all kinds of cool stuff and then submitted it in January. <laughs> yeah, strong like, submissions. Where did they all come from? Strong submissions across the board. Very tough decisions we've had to make. We're actually recording the podcast late because we had to sort out so much. And the truth of it is, I'm not. I'm just not going to be able to talk about a, a lot of films that were submitted. And I'm sorry about that. It doesn't mean your submission was bad. It just means that I, there's only so much. There's only so... Uh, the, I'm sorry. These podcasts can only be so long. Because yeah. not only do we have to sit and record them, I've got to edit it. I've got to get it out and get it ready. And we're doing all the back end stuff. So we, we certainly try to do the best we can to talk about the most things. But I have so much to say about several of the submissions that... Um, I'm going to just try to have to put a cap on it and do my best to not go into the weeds on some of these things. But there were a couple of films that we're not going to actually going to discuss, but solid projects also just perfectly fine. But because January was so strong with submissions, especially in a couple of different categories. Yeah, it just it, your project may have been pushed to the fringe. So yeah, some official selections are just not going to be discussed. And and that's always the case with the NDI Film Awards podcast. But I feel like there's so much more I could be talking about this month. Um, But that said, let's try to get into it. And I'm going to tell you first off that somebody in January cheated. <laughs> that's right. Someone cheated this month, and I'm going to call them out later in this episode. Hmm? I'm intrigued. Because <laughs> I, um, I don't know what's happening. Okay. All right. I feel out of the loop. I'd like to be in the loop. Let me jump. We're going to jump right into the honorable mentions Which now. Which there are a ton. I don't know that we've ever had this many honorable mentions. Well, we've had this many honorable mentions, but I'm honestly, well, I think this is the strongest group of honorable mentions we've ever had yeah i mean i think all of these could easily be winners in different months i mean just again the competition was nuts so the first one i want to talk about is a documentary short uh called archie and this was directed by michael morris um what a sweet little documentary i loved this um, and, and I'm going to, I'm going to read a lot of the synopsis in this episode to keep things moving. So I don't have to explain everything, but, uh, for this, it's from San Francisco to Honolulu, Archie traded his life and career path with a new purpose to slow down and focus on the essential. Now this is about a guy who moves to, who just quits everything, yep. moves to Hawaii, to live a simple life, he didn't. He was a mechanic. He saw himself going to work every day and being exhausted, and just wanted more out of his existence. Even though that meant living simpler, you know, doing with less. What this doc did was really made me second guess my life choices as I sit here and talk about how busy we've been, <laughs> how much content we put out. It made me say, well, wait a minute. <laughs> why aren't we just on the ocean surfing every day? Why, why are we not doing that? Why am I not in Oahu? <laughs> uh, but the great camera work. Um, Michael Morris used one lens. Really? Throughout this whole thing. Yeah, I, I read. And it's just simple. It's endearing. I think it's relatable to everybody because probably most of us should slow down a little bit, take some time to enjoy life. There's a lot of rush to... Yep do what's considered the norm. And well, sometimes that's just the good idea because life is expensive and you don't want to be living on the street. Right. <laughs> and, and it's not, you know, suggesting that you, that everybody has to go that drastic of like leaving your car with your parents and only taking your bicycle with you to live, you know, uh, this more humble life. But it was a, a very sweet story. He seems like a really cool cat. And just enjoys everything he's doing. And it's not that he's not contributing to society. He absolutely is. And he's, you know, just living the way that he wants to live, which I think we all should do as much as we can. Well, and, you know, I left this out, but he moves to Hawaii so that he and his... Girlfriend? They're not married. Nope. His girlfriend can surf. Yeah. And they can uh, they can just have more time together. Yeah. He ends up taking a job at a bicycle shop and 
he they keep things super simple so that they can do the things in life that they enjoy but still take care of themselves because yep. they're responsible people. Yeah, they they're not put... living in a tent or anything, you right. know, they got a house and right. you know all the things, but it's just cool to see how happy someone can be without all of the stuff that life tells you you're supposed to have and that you're supposed to do. So excellent doc short. Yeah, we loved it. Thank you, Michael Morris, for submitting, and thank you for introducing us to Archie and reminding us that we probably should slow down a little more in life. Now, speeding back up to get through the honorable (laughs) mentions, um, we had a music video submission by, and I hope I'm getting this right, but Bonji and Mayuri. And this is a family. This is actually more of a family vlog set to their own original music. And their voices complement each other. Yeah, they sounded great. The song was was very urethra. I don't know. What's the word? You're- <laughs> I'm not saying. Well, I'll just move on. Please. Well, Because it, it, it's really a, mix, it's a mixed bag of media. And there's no real story to this other than here are some places we've been. And hey, shout out to Fur Coats. Dude, was which- <laughs> rocking the fur coat. I was like, what is um, happening? But it was cool. But yeah, this shifts from their music video to some home video stuff to yeah, one of their comedy. kids doing stand-up comedy. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a family vlog that yeah. they entered as a music video because um, it the first part of it is family video... Of sorts. I mean, it's yeah. it's shot to it, look yeah, like a music video, but yeah. it's it's just stuff from what they're doing over a song. Some that of it they does made. seem like it was staged and done purposefully to complement the lyrics. Yeah. Yes, yeah, uh, but definitely an honorable mention from our music video category. Another strong submission we received uh, was to Maureen Street, directed by John Paravalaris. It's got beautiful cinematography by Ryan Bain. Um, the actors, John Tamburini and Maria Bell, turn in really wonderful performances. And this is about a vexed son who confronts his icy mother over her choice to leave behind their family home to a charity. And I love the direction John is headed. I think he's really talented. And this must have been a pretty cathartic experience for him. And it's a great indie film that'll be relatable to many. And there's nothing I'd really offer here to give notes about. It was just a really well done narrative short. Problem is, it was just submitted in a strong month. There was another one that we chose as the winner, but it's it's certainly an honor- honorable mention and a worthy watch. And that was, was uh, To Maureen Street by John Paravalaris. And then we had Fight Night, directed by Spencer Zhang. Really interesting narrative short. And... Uh, le- well, let me read the synopsis. A high school student must make a decision when his environment pressures him into violence against his true identity. Now, I have to acknowledge some home field advantage here and set my local community bias aside. Because Spencer is from Sacramento. We're from the Sacramento area. And I am rooting for Spencer. Uh, he's young. He's on the right track. Um, and the, some things I really thought were positive about this film, I love the drawing animation. Yeah, that was really fun. That was interesting. Totally unexpected. Yeah, it felt unique. It helped tell the story. And it was a great way to achieve some shots that he otherwise wouldn't have been able to get. There's an incident with a car mm-hmm. that's really tough to shoot as indie filmmakers making contact with a car and a body. And he's able to use the animation yep. to push that. There was an overhead shot that they yep. did in animation that I really loved. So I love the implementation of that. Very creative. And maybe some of that should have been mixed in with the action at the end to mm-hmm. kind of sell the violence that is taking place at the end there, but it's a solid effort by a young director. And the things that, you know, I I run into here, uh, the production value, the sound is often unbearable. Yeah. In this hard to listen to. There's a lot of clipping. The levels are hot. It's just bad levels. The sound mix is pretty poor. And I think this is a great commercial for the use of modern 32-bit float capable recorders. And if you don't know what that means, Google it, friends. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, uh, or, or go to my buddy Curtis Judd's yeah. YouTube channel. I was going to ask you, which one of your YouTube <laughs> yeah. people uh, 
would be the best uh, it, knowledge base for this. If one. you don't know of Curtis Judd, uh, he's he's on YouTube, J U D D, and um, he helped me out with some bits on Madison Baker was here. But uh, yeah, a 32 bit float, I think, would have saved this production. Now, it, that's something that's pretty brand new at, at price points that are achievable for young filmmakers okay. now. So it's just emerging. But it's it's basically uh, if you don't know what thirty two bit float is, it's kind of like um, HDR when it comes to video. Uh, you just have a, a high dynamic range of sounds, so you, you can whisper, and you can raise that without raising the noise floor, or you can scream it to the microphone, and you won't clip. Uh, you can always bring it down into acceptable levels with no problem. Um, but it just seemed like whoever was writing the audio on this had the levels just way off so there's some some nasty clipping and you know just story wise here with fight night there doesn't seem to be any stakes involved yep. it's just kind of this thing that happens um and and i had to really read about fight night more to find out more about what's going on with spencer and what he's trying to say in this film and it aims to tackle you know, and this is my take, but it aims to tackle the mythical toxic masculinity, but it fails to define what that is. And and me personally, I'm like, what is that? That's I think it's, that's just a buzz. It really <laughs> phrase. is. So um, now from reading about Spencer, it seems this film is very personal to him, but I don't think it reflects that. And I feel like this film should be a little closer to Spencer's own emotional voice so I think he's probably maybe even playing it too safe and really needs to dig into what his experience was about. And, you know, I could be totally misreading this. You know, I'd love to have a conversation with Spencer. I'd love to run into the guy um, and, and talk about it. But uh, for me, if the example of quote unquote toxic masculinity is Connor, the antagonist, the antagonist, well, Connor's just a jerk. He's just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And, and that that's really it. Um, but I did want to mention that Jasper Capilad and Peyton Tennyson turn in really decent performances here. And I'm rooting for these guys. I love the passion. I think uh, Spencer Zhang, the arrow is pointing up on him. And, and I, I can't wait to see what he does next. And our final honorable mention here that I really have a lot to say about is a documentary feature we received called Something Ain't Right. And it ain't... It's not. No, this documentary <laughs> the is documentary right. The documentary is right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but the um, subject is on point. And this this is directed by Susan Ruth Downs, MD, and Alex Voss. Is that does that stand for medical doctor? Uh, well. Huh. Basically. Okay. <laughs> hmm. I'll read from the synopsis. This documentary looks at physicians who were successfully treating COVID since March 2020. Yet the majority of these physicians throughout the world were censored. Countless lives could have been saved had this not happened. Had the censorship not happened, would we have needed the economically destructive lockdowns? Would people be living in fear as they are today? How would our lives be different? Great questions. Like the unfortunate part for me here is I want to make this our best documentary feature of the month. But I would be personally biased if I did that. There is another winner. But I think this documentary is very important. And I couldn't find a way outside of being a submission from NDI to watch this documentary. But we we will have the their website linked at NDIFilmAwards.com. I highly encourage anybody listening to go pursue a way to find, find a way to see something ain't right. Uh, because we are very much on the side of this documentary, and I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to lay it out there. We, mm-hmm, how much can I actually say? <laughs> well, let's just say that we work very closely with, an ex- with a brilliant, experienced physician. And in March of 2020, it was clear to this person, oh, well, here's how you treat this. Yep. And he wasn't the only physician out there saying, well, you got to treat it like this. And that physician was doing a podcast at the time. It was doing fairly well on YouTube. I was producing the podcast. 
And he was going over case studies of the patients he was treating. He physically treated them himself. These are not other people's patients. These are his actual patients. In addition, this is also close to our family. We had a family member who was really ill with COVID. And this person and like several others that I got to document along the way. I mean, we're talking boots on the ground, talking to patients, getting their personal testimony. But I, we had a family member who was convinced that they were, this was it for them. Yep. And it certainly wasn't the only person I ever um, documented this way. And after getting a couple of simple things for treatment and a solid nap, pretty much, yeah. I mean, is what it boils down to. Um, it was a complete turnaround. And within a week, felt great. And so this documentary is fantastic because it's it's very courageous of these doctors. Well, to I think continue. you skipped an important part is that the podcast right. that was being produced was being censored by YouTube. We started we were one of the first yep. podcasts, the first physicians to be censored, have videos banned and removed from YouTube. Yep. And these were not these aren't conspiracy theories these aren't crackpots and you have uh, like we had video personal video testimonies of of people saying i was sick i had this and then holding up the prescription my doctor subscribed or prescribed this yeah. and and this is how i felt before i took this and then i felt way better and at that time if you were somebody who was talking about these medications yep. these proven long-standing <laughs> medications that were not dangerous in any way that uh thousands upon thousands of people take every day for others for other symptoms yep. and ailments um you were getting censored you were having your job in jeopardy licenses threatening to be removed pharmacies withholding physicians prescriptions yep. for people who are sick yeah um so without going off on a tangent because about we can go there <laughs> the insanity of the last couple of years and i don't care what side of the aisle you're on you should be on the side of saving people of lives. saving people's lives and when with, you have with medications that are readily available and safe <laughs> I, I i don't care who in bureaucracy is saying whatever if you have physicians who are trying to get the word out, whose only benefit is to help people, which is what they've set out to do with their lives, and they're being silenced, that's telling you something sinister is going on. So this, I credit Dr. Susan Ruth Downs and Alex Voss for being courageous and working hard to put this documentary out. And this documentary has interviews with doctors, physicians who know better, and they're talking about their experience through this quote-unquote pandemic. So um, very much worth the watch. I think I think a lot of people are just sick of this whole topic at this point, and, and I don't know what the repercussions are for um, reality at this point, because now... Things that were said to be a conspiracy theory six months ago, a but, year ago, are just the things the CDC is coming out and saying, oh, yeah, well, yeah. this is actually true. Yeah. So. Yeah. And um, can I curse on this podcast? <laughs> it, well, it is your podcast. You no can. shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just, I don't even want to get, I'm trying to be happy, go lucky. Yeah. And, we're going to um, get happy here in a minute. <laughs> it, talk about. This just happens um, to be a, a topic we're quite uh, passionate about. But really, my friends on the right, my friends on the left, none of the sides of the aisles matter. What matters is what is the, first of all, freedom of medicine. Yeah, freedom of choice. Should be respected. Medical freedom. Um, And it's just, it's insanity what's happened. And Something Ain't Right is a wonderful um, feature-length documentary Narrated by Kevin Sorbo, by the way. Hello. I don't think I mentioned that. You didn't. You didn't. <laughs> um, but uh, the important part is the, the the professionals involved that are trying to speak their mind and get the word out. They have nothing to gain. Yeah. You don't get extra patients nope. or 
uh, you know, your show after Dr. Phil or something like that. These are people <laughs> who are risking their jobs to get the truth out. And how sad to is people. that? And this truth has existed since before March of 2020. Yes. And it's just been silenced quite a bit. So, so watch this episode get banned from YouTube because we had... Uh, uh, misinformation or something. It's all right. We didn't say any medicine names. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But, you know, I don't know. Um, so, anyways. Great, I would, great, great honorable mention. Huge. Yeah. Huge stuff. Um, all right. I'm going to try to get through these categories, but uh, it's going to be a jumbo episode. Um, we're going to start with best music video. And if you need something to turn away from the frustration of the of world political topics, this is it. This is it. And let me just thank director Sean Astin for sending us Ben Olson's location. Uh, this song is great. The video is great. It's a breath of fresh air. It's well thought. I mean, literally. Out. Yeah, actually. <laughs> Yeah, um, and and look, the song is called "Location," and this is a music video. I'm sure I ma- did. I make that clear. Yeah. I, I feel like I'm in a different place right now. Um, <laughs> You'll catch up. And it's and it's performed by Ben Olsen, who is a he, he's a musician. He's an actor. He's I very no. He was an actor. Yes. Well, it well, shows. You know, you wouldn't know he's an actor because uh, Sean, <laughs> your film freeway submission. Like doesn't have any information about you or Ben. Oh, and so I need. I I'm telling you, everybody. Side note: Help me out. Help me help you. <laughs> Give me information about what you're submitting, so that I don't have to go do a bunch of homework to talk about it on the podcast. Normally, I wouldn't bother, but I liked Ben so much that I'm like, okay, I, I need to go go to his YouTube channel. I need to look at all these links and find out who this guy is. And he's got this Tom Holland kind of uh, 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 glow about yeah, him. Yeah, he does. And we've linked the video over at Indie Eye Film Awards. It'll be on the winner's page. So check out the video. Uh, we'll have the link to his Spotify and some social media links. And this kid is worth your support. But the song is called Location. And and it's the hook is basically... Uh, I turned off my location. And you're just, he's out yep. enjoying the world. He's driving with the windows down and like singing his own song. And I'm just, I am here for that. Yeah. Like Sitting with a guitar so out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, on the roof of his car, like just jumping off the rocks and, and I enjoying think the outdoors. I love it. That's something that I think we, uh, it's coming after the last couple of years, I think we need more of that in our lives. And this just seems like the anthem for getting out of your house yep. and unplugging and remembering that we're humans meant to enjoy an experience here and on explore. Earth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, wonderful song. Great performance by Ben. Great work by Sean Astin. Except for omitting so much information that he could have included at Film Freeway, Sean. So next time <laughs> you submit something to our festival, please or, give us all the info. We yeah, or, want to see. Sean, seriously, right now, if you're listening to this podcast, stop what you're doing. Go over to your Film Freeway account and go go put in the, the Facebook links for Ben uh, or links for you, yourself, or Instagram or the Spotify link. Um, and, and tell us more about Ben Olson. Tell us more about Sean Astin so that the festivals you're submitting to have a little something more to dig into instead of just the music video. Just a tip from a guy who runs a film festival. But Location by Ben Olson, directed by Sean Astin, is our best music video for January of 2022. Yay! And now we'll stop over at Best Web Series. And we had a submission by Larry Eisler, which was... Which was really interesting. It's called Expedition Entity, The Black Hawk War Part 1. Dre, what did you think of this submission? Interesting is a good word to use. I, I am I am not of the ghost hunter persuasion, so I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure um you know how to tell if the things that they're doing and the equipment that they're using is real. Or if they really truly believe this, um, I wasn't a hundred percent sure what I was supposed to be thinking. Overall, they sold it 
they they did eventually make me believe that this was truly something that, that they weren't acting. A lot of effort, too. There really was. They they had some great shots um, at a specific scene where this battle took place and talking to the spirits of the people who mm-hmm. had, had been in that battle. They seemed to really get a lot out of it of themselves, from the experience, and I think that was probably what I took away from it the most. Right, I think they, they clearly had a lot of fun making this. Yeah. I, well, at least I, at least that's the impression I got. And, and we, it, I think it's a father son duo. I think that the 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 father is the one who's on camera, and the son is the one who's behind the camera or runs the equipment, because I think he's the third. Um, I saw that in the names. Mm-hmm. I think that's a cool thing for a father and son to be able to do together. Well, Larry, I hope I- I'm getting that right. <laughs> well, Larry Eisler, for Expedition Entity, you have won Best Web Series for January of 2022. Yay! Thanks for submitting. Now, we received a lot of narrative shorts. Wow, we really did. Strong narrative shorts. Now, I'll say probably documentary this month, uh, both short and feature, were the toughest decisions we've ever had to make. Uh, but the narrative shorts were really strong, too. Our winner this month was submitted by uh, James Frost, or directed by James Frost. It's called Almondwood, and this is a psychological thriller that follows a young socialite as she lures her lover into the woods to present him with a seemingly erotic yet secretly sinister birthday surprise. And this is a ride. Literally. <laughs> Literally. Um, uh, but <laughs> I really can't go on without mentioning... That the director, James Frost... Well, he's just a regular guy, right? Oh, uh, yeah. he's. I think he came out of nowhere. Probably obscurity. Yeah. Um, but he's directed uh, award-winning videos for Alabama Shakes. One of my favorite bands. He directed Sound and Color for them. He directed a little video that might be my favorite music video of all time. Uh, Cold Plays Yellow. Blowing my mind right now. Uh, Nora Jones, Come Away With Me. I mean, seriously. OK, Go, This Too Shall Pass. Literally one of the best videos in the history of ever. And the cheer at the end, like, always gives me chills. And House of Cards by Radiohead. Whatever. OK. Just so- a regular guy. <laughs> Whatever. Submitting to our pod- our film festival. Dude, number one, I, I just want to say I love the approach of Yellow, and it blew my mind. That I remember its premiere. Yeah, and I was like, "How did they do that?" I need, I the need steps. to know how to do that. <laughs> um, well, okay, so let's talk about Almond Wood. Okay, um, it's number one, gorgeous cinematography, solid performances by the leads, Kate Amundsen and Will Brandt. It's a, it's just a well executed short that keeps you interested in what's going to happen, and that's. That's the essential That's all, key yeah. um, of of storytelling. Now, I, I I feel like even though we love this short, yeah, and even though I just want to heap praise upon James, I do have to be real and say that there there are some getting there insert shots that I felt just weren't great or even necessary, like. Like you need footage that says, "Okay, we're moving. We're we've, still driving. we've traveled. We've gone far," and I just didn't like those choices. Like some of the aerial stuff was awkward. Some of the trees just passing was um, I don't know. It just didn't work for me. Like everything else was so good. The bar was so high with all of the other footage. Yeah, like it just felt like everything else was an was an afterthought that you ran and got real quick. And there seemed to be no stakes. Yeah, uh, their 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 conversation at the beginning that establishes their characters mm-hmm. and their relationship. It, it, I I couldn't I didn't I didn't understand why she was. Uh, why did she want to do this? Like, what was her motivation for this? I didn't. I just didn't understand. Yeah, I feel like, you know, sitting here, I just feel like we had to have missed something obvious because I just don't think it would be I mean, was so much, is but, he like the greatest dude? Probably not. And I mean, his actions kind of well, he, showed he, that yeah. he was a little bit uh, he re- arrogant. and He reveals kind of his character. Yeah. And he, I mean, it's certainly at the very least hints 
to he, who he is and yeah. why she would. So I'm I'm wondering, I guess I don't mean to overstep, but I'm wondering, I guess if she's obviously seen this character flaw in him and she's had this planned. Well, yeah. Okay. I, I mean, and, that's come on. Yeah, that's, I know. I'm just. I guess I'm implied, just trying. But, I'm reliving it. And right. <laughs> explaining it to myself. Well, I think the the biggest problem for me was I felt like the the character Jason. Um, and without, see, yeah. I don't want to talk too much. I don't want to spoil a lot. But I felt like Jason had really simple options at the end here. Several very simple options where any normal person would be like, uh, I'm not going to do I'm this. I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know what? No. Um, and, and this doesn't happen for him. Um, and, and it just kind of pulled me out of what was going on. But... <laughs> There's a redeeming moment here because the end of the the very end of this short brought it all home for me and I was surprised. Yeah. I actually laughed out loud. I'm not I'm not sure if I was supposed to, <laughs> but I laughed out loud in great satisfaction at the um at the last sequence. Yeah. You know, so are there things I would personally want to tweak about this film? Absolutely. But I really dig James' vision and his artistry and he kept me under t- entertained. And mostly so at the end. And that's really what you're looking for out of your indie shorts. So uh, James Frost, director of Yellow um, (laughs) and director of Almondwood. Almondwood is our best narrative short for January of 2022. Yay! We have so much to say. My goodness. All right. Um, Let's let's, uh, let's go to best documentary short. Let's. I got to tell you about Chad Weber because uh, my boy Chad Weber really likes Indie Eye Film Awards. He submitted two films. <laughs> to is us. he the cheater? No. He, oh, oh, okay. Chad is not the cheater. Okay. Chad is eager. Yes, he <laughs> Chad is. Chad is enthusiastic. Uh, but he submitted two uh, docs to us. Uh, one was Pivot Forward, and the other was Special in the Ordinary. Both solid. And Special in the Ordinary, very good doc short. You know, there's a lot I could say about that, and it would be a contender in any month for best doc short. However, Chad's Pivot Forward really blew us away. Yeah, it was beautiful. It had such a consistent look and feel throughout, and I I just I loved the story. And that story is exploring the mindset of a small business owner that instead of scaling back in the midst of uncertainty and struggle, pushes forward. So Chad's telling the story of Rachel Hunter, who lives in Colorado, and her business challenges through the last couple of years, as so many businesses have suffered because they shut down the economy and destroyed people's lives. (laughs) (laughs) Um, We laugh so that we don't... And, people. and Dre, help me with this because yes. Rachel's business, uh, am I going to say this right? A Flore? Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. great. So, a Flore.com, by the way, we will have that link over at NDI Film Awards. This is her business. She provides flowers. Yeah, she's a wedding florist. I mean, that was her sole business. I mean, weddings and events. And then, well, what happened to weddings in the, the, the spring and summer of 2020? Well, they got canceled. Because you can't be with other people. And so her business suffered. And it's her figuring out how to keep her business alive. Well, and not just keeping it alive, but going, going bigger. Like, yes. And and getting expanded. into a building that she loved. It, where it, it seems like... It gives like, me chills. I got chills right now. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like, here's, this, here's the dumbest thing you could yeah. do right now, given the world climate and your situation. Um, and she did it because she was chasing a dream, yep. and she's amazing at what she does. Um, and I, I hope, I hope people in Colorado yeah, go she's check in her Longmont. out. Longmont. She's in Longmont, but she services a whole entire area of Colorado. Yeah, and I saw somewhere. Doesn't she? She travels and does. She even has provided her stuff for other states, venues, and and events for in other states. Well, sure, she yeah. could. I mean. Um, well, and look, let me just stop talking about the film real quick to talk to Chad. Oh, yeah. Chad, I need you to please go to your website and separate the video from the website masthead. Yes. It's very distracting. <laughs> I feel like the masthead is covering up part of the video. It's not, but because you run that uh, that player, 
the, the, yeah, the player in the masthead touch, and it's so distracting. It's yeah. taking it, it. I had a hard time with that. So, little note from somebody just trying to watch it. Uh, if yeah, you could do throw a spacer in between those things, needs a spacer. <laughs> but uh, okay, so that's that's my only criticism because there is stunning cinematography. Yeah, my criticism is uh, uh, it's, you're distracting me from the beauty that you made. <laughs> Uh, so what stunning cinematography, yeah. the lighting, the color, the grading, uh, the shots, the audio is pristine. It's it's got a simple but beautiful score. Um, Rachel was excellent. Yeah, she narrates it. Yeah. And you want to root for her right away. Mm-hmm. And you just come away um, encouraged by her courage and drive and enthusiasm for what she does. Yeah. So at IndieEyeFilmAwards.com for our January 2022 winners, you can go there, you can click on the link to watch this documentary, Pivot Forward, um, and you should. Anybody who makes documentaries should go see what Chad Weber did, because Pivot Forward is our best documentary short for January of 2022. Yay! Now I want to ask the listeners, when we do these awards and Dre claps... <laughs> To me, it's almost pathetic because here, here's the one person clapping for your win. I know but it's it. one person. It's not <laughs> zero people. Now, if you heard the annual awards uh, production, I included some uh, some foley applause Do and not crowd cheering. Vote against me. What I <laughs> it's want, all I have. <laughs> what I want to know from the listeners is: Do you want Do you want to be awarded with Dre's clap or my foley applause that? I put into the uh, annual awards. Okay, I swear to you, I will not be offended, but it would be cool if they voted or like left a comment and well, said which one they would prefer. If they chose you, it'd be less work for me. Yeah, that's but true. But yeah, leave a, it, go to the YouTube channel and yeah. leave a comment about which you prefer, Dre's applause, Dre's singular clap, or the production value of uh, Foley applause from Final Cut Pro. <laughs> so... <laughs> Just trying to replace me with a robot. That's fine. <laughs> no, I, I'd rather them choose you, but I. It just. It always funny. It's always funny to me to hear the one clap. It's like yay, that one person <laughs> way out in the audience. <laughs> um, Sometimes so. that's all people have. Um, okay, so we got to move on now to our best narrative feature. So Calvin T. Shepard submitted Safe House sixteen eighteen. This is a feature film. Uh, A revenge plot traps three sisters and their getaway driver in a safe house until they can escape the country. But they may be running from so much more than just the police. Now, Calvin made this in northern Colorado, another Colorado mention. Cool. And we also have a review for this by DJ Ford over at IndieIFMWords.com. So our written review section, there will be a, a more of a... Full review by DJ. Is DJ a real person? Yes, DJ's a real person. Yeah, he's he's somebody. Your, it's not your pseudonym or anything. Right? No, it, it <laughs> is not me. It is someone better than me who loves movies more than me. But most importantly, um, DJ is able to take a, a non biased look at it. Just, well, I won't say non biased. I'll be able to say, when I was starting to write the reviews for the films, I felt like I was kind of saying the same thing on the podcast and saying the th- same thing in the written review. And I just felt like for the people who are submitting and then paying for the written reviews, I'd like to give them the benefit of having a, a completely independent voice. Total they're, outsider. They're not choosing winners. Yep. They're not involved with anything else. They're not... They don't know who anybody else is. They don't really see any other submissions. So it's a... It's a clean look at your film with a lot of thought given behind it. And uh, we were very fortunate to team up with DJ to help facilitate the written reviews because as IndieEye grows, it's more difficult for me to take that on as a challenge. But I think it's also better for the indie filmmakers out there to have this independent voice. Now, DJ is not obligated to be glowing about your film. He's going to tell you the truth about what he thought about your film. And that's what I love about it. Because sometimes, sometimes he can be super loving. Sometimes he can be very critical. And I love his writing style. So, that said, there is a written review of Safe House 1618 
at the at the website, but I wanted to say some things of my own here because I actually technically as at at the time of recording this, I have not read that review yet. Oh, you haven't? No, I haven't. Okay. Um, so I don't even know what what DJ's takeaway is, but I will say that Safe House sixteen eighteen has a super intense opening scene that it grabs you right away, and um and and it's. They deal with some gore very artfully in a very smart way that helps you, not only it helps you pull off the shot, but it makes it just production simpler for you. And I really appreciated that. And I love the whole, the opening shot married with the closing shot of that scene. I really liked with the bird flying away. Great job, Calvin. I love that. So there's so much heart and effort and dedication in making this film and it shows throughout and it succeeds for me it succeeds in many ways that a lot of indie films don't just a really strong combination of production value cast performance directing choices it just it does so many things really really well now there there's something about it for me that just doesn't like all things don't naturally gel very well at all times and it would start hmm. super strong and i'd say probably the first 20 minutes are so strong that it it keeps you invested to follow through okay and that's great great job it's a great way to open the film he does not waste a lot of time getting to the hook all right and that's great but i think like my, my main note here is that i think a scalpel pass in the editing would really help there was a lot. Pare it down a smidge. Yeah, probably more than a smidge. Okay. But there's a lot here where I'm like, you got cut, cut there, <laughs> cut there. That's enough. We don't need this. That was an extra shot. And I felt like it could probably remove a solid 10 minutes. Easy out of this film. Um, we, just, we run into that so much with independent yeah. films, especially the longer and, ones or things that they want to s- say that is a short. It turns out to not really be a short. <laughs> and, it, and for me, it's like the biggest challenge of being a filmmaker or a content creator of any sort is that... I love what you do. You have to kill your darlings yeah. and you have to be open to it. And you have to know that even when you don't want to, making anything shorter is always the right choice. Even if you don't like it, it's always the right choice. It's always the right direction. And I just felt like there's there was stuff in here that needed to be trimmed away to keep the pacing uh, especially towards that uh, and in, 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 into the end of the second, really kind of the second act. And in the the final scenes, really, there's just a lot that could be cut away and make it better. But these are the kind of submissions that you cheer for going forward because it inspires filmmakers to push harder and reach farther and put time into creating. And Calvin Shepard absolutely did that here. He put together something really great, in my opinion, at this indie level. And, you know, I don't know what DJ's writing about it, but I encourage everyone to go check out the written review at IndieIFilmAwards.com for Safe House 1618. Tremendous submission, Calvin. Um, thank you for sending that our way. And Safe House 1618 is our best narrative feature for January of 2022. Yay! Now, for the other feature category, Best Doc Feature... I'm I'm shocked because we had so many really good submissions for documentary features. This is not a category that typically gets a ton of submissions. No, we get a couple of really good options. Uh, but this month, people came to play. And we have a submission called Dark Shadows and Beyond, the Jonathan Frid story, which was directed by Mary O'Leary. So I'm going to read the synopsis here. The first documentary devoted to Canadian-born star Jonathan Frid covers the fascinating life and career of the Shakespearean actor, who became a TV icon in the role of vampire Barnabas Collins on the gothic daytime serial Dark Shadows. Frid's portrayal was a key reason the series, which ran from 66 to 71, became must-see TV for 20 million daily viewers and has been cited as a key influence for contemporary genre films and the series such as Twilight, True Blood, and Vampire Diaries. Twilight! 
And a little bit that it has here about Mary is uh, Mary O'Leary is a daytime Emmy winning producer who has worked on five daytime television dramas, including Guiding Light, Another World, One Life to Live, General Hospital, and The Young and the Restless. Literally all the best. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dark, Dark Shadows and Beyond, the Jonathan Frid story, is her first documentary. She conceived, directed, and produced the feature-length film. Wow. Um, and it's very impressive. I mean, it's an hour and 40 minutes that moves fast, and it's got great supporting interviews, um, clips from the shows, images, uh, music that keeps a nice rhythm. It's never intrusive. It's just a well-told story by someone who really knows what they're doing and could probably make the life of a river rock seem <laughs> fascinating. I mean, just high applause for Mary O'Leary for the assembly of of such a documentary. It, it's a lot to take on. I mean, you're talking about a basically a man's life story yep. with a career in film. There's so much, there's so many corners you could go into. And, and while in those corners, you could get bogged down by a lot. And I, you know, bogged down probably isn't the right term, but you could probably spend a lot of time in certain aspects of Jonathan Frid's life. But the pacing is done so well. I just, I was really impressed by what Mary did here. So we gave Dark Shadows and Beyond, the Jonathan Frid story, our best documentary feature for January of 2022. Yay! Thanks for the submission, Mary. Really good work. Another fantastic documentary we received was called Finding Inner Hero, which is directed by Constance Brenneman and Brad Hammer. Constance Brenneman is in Along Came Wanda, yeah. which at the top of the podcast, we said, go pre-order Along Came Wanda uh, between February 7th and the 14th. And I say for Constance Brenneman's performance, Dre says, see it for Kathy DeBono. So it's a great combo that you can't you can't miss. Go pre-order. So back, back to Finding Inner Hero. Uh, and I'll read their synopsis. The breaking point is the making point. These are the stories of heroic transformation examined through the lens of the hero's journey. Each individual we follow has completely deconstructed and reconstructed their lives for the better. We examine how each person uses tragic turns to self-reflect and to refocus towards living a more joyful, authentic, meaningful lives. So this is a feature-length doc telling several very personal stories with great camera work, excellent sound quality, uh, segments that transition very naturally, which was key for me watching it. Um, it's just very professional all around. And so we already had a best doc feature winner, but this submission by Constance Brenneman and Brad Hammer, Finding Inner Hero, wins our best sound design for January of 2022. Yay! It's hard to say January of 2022. It's a little bit <laughs> of a I'm, I'm, I'm not used to 2022 yeah. yet. Just say 22. I feel that 22. No, that sounds January of 22. I'm That's feeling 22. No, no. No? I'm not? No. I don't think you are. I don't. I'm not. <laughs> I am not. In any way... <laughs> Um, I got pains, kids. Look, I didn't know you when you were 22, but I'm just guessing. You actually did know me when I, when no. I was 22. I met you oh, right after I turned yeah, 21. 21. Yeah. 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 So anyways, more about <laughs> Matt and Dre's personal life. We're old. <laughs> well, she is. I'm I'm very young. And by very young, I mean four, very- Four years older than me. I mean very immature. So- <laughs> um, but I have more documentary talk for everybody. Fun. Because we had, you may remember a submission from December. And if you haven't heard December's podcast episode, why aren't, why haven't you heard it? So you mean to tell me you're listening to January 2022's episode and you didn't go back and listen to every single episode <laughs> of NDI you? before? Um, but no, December, we had a short film winner, Peaches, oh, which so good, fairly good. You can hear us gush about it on the December episode of Indie Eye Film Awards. Yeah. And uh, but d that was directed by Benjamin Hunt. And Benjamin submitted a doc short to us this month. 
Well, Benjamin teamed up with classmates from Chapman University for a documentary travel course to make this doc short. And this crew consists of Benjamin Hunt, Andrew Jung, Sarah Kano, Sam Hartman, and Kendall Rich. And the film is called Jeepney, a Philippine icon. Um, And as they describe here, the Jeepney, or Jeep, as affectionately called in the Philippines, is the most popular mode of transportation for thousands of daily commuters. This documentary explores the Jeep's importance in Filipino culture through the eyes of local drivers, passengers, and business professionals who rely on the Jeep in more ways than one. Now, I love that they they were able to, I don't know how this came about, but they, they focused on this really specific thing and then just shot the hell out of it. Um, and the cinematography, I guess, goes to credit to uh, Ben Hunt and Andrew Jung. But it, this is gorgeous. Uh, the sound is great. The storytelling is great. And again, these people are just knocking this out of the park. So they're doing big things over at Chapman. You want to get into filmmaking? Um, I generally don't recommend going to film school. Um, and that's a whole other conversation, especially in contemporary times. But I think whatever they're doing over at Chapman yeah. University seems to be putting Looking. kids on the right path. Yeah. And I just thought this was absolutely gorgeous. Now, we had so many strong docs. It was difficult to sort through them all properly. But Jeepney, a Philippine icon, wins our best cinematography for January of 2022. Yay! So what else you got, Ben? You got, uh, I don't know, you got some animations, you got music videos, you got a feature-length film. I mean, what's coming next? Let's go. <laughs> um, great job by everyone involved in making that. Absolutely beautiful work. Um, and what a cool opportunity to get to shoot down there in the Philippines. Just so absolutely they went and beautiful. did all the, fi- all the shooting. They didn't, like, just gather footage or, it, like, Wow. That's I mean, I, at some point this year, we're going to have to have Ben on yes. a podcast and talk about peaches and this and everything that he's got going on. And he can explain more about how they pulled this all together. So I, I look forward to an opportunity to chat with uh, Benjamin Hunt and get more information about all this. So we talked about Safe House 1618, which was submitted, uh, directed by Calvin T. Shepard. And Jasmine Day plays Joe. It, she's the lead in Safe House 1618, and a lot was asked of her for this role. There's, It's just a huge range for her character. There was a lot to tackle, and we felt she did it well. And Jasmine Day earns our best actor for January of 2022. Yay! Congratulations, Jasmine. And again, casting is directing, and Calvin did a good job there. Now, speaking of casting is directing, you may recall at the top of the podcast episode, I mentioned we had a cheater for January, and that's what I'm going to talk about next. Because if you set out to make a film, and you get Caroline Ingalls, Chappie, Clary, Wurlitzer, Bernardo, the shark himself... And Beverly Ann, well, more people will know her as Phyllis, but I will forever know her as Beverly Ann. You are cheating. (laughs) What am I talking about? I'm talking about a little film directed by Valerio Zanoli called Not to Forget. And it stars five Academy Award winners. Like how? (laughs) It's he's got Karen Grassle from Little House on the Prairie. Louis Gossett Jr. Really? From everything. Yeah. <laughs> and anything he's in is going to make me love it. It, it. If you don't know who Chappie is, if you don't know what movie Louis Gossett Jr. played Chappie in, then really, what are you doing with your life? <laughs> Go watch Iron Eagle. Now, I wanted to initially refer to him as Drac. What's that from? Um, go watch that movie if you don't know what it's from. Um, watch all the Lewis Gossett Jr. movies. But those are my favorites that he was in. Who's Beverly Ann and or Phyllis? Well, that's Cloris Leachman. Beverly Ann is from Facts of Life. After oh, Mrs. Garrett left, it was Beverly yeah, Ann. Right. 
Uh, but she's, I mean, from Phyllis, from, well, the, the her own Phyllis show, but it was a spinoff of Mary Tyler Moore. Um, Olympia Dukakis. Hello, Clary from my very favorite movie, Still Magnolias. I know every single one of her lines from that movie. I mean, and just OMG, the amazing careers of everybody. Uh, Tatum O'Neill, uh, who I refer to as Wurlitzer. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go look it up and catch up with American cinema. <laughs> um, and George Shakiris from West Side, from 1961's West Side Story. He played Bernardo. All of these people are in Valerio Zanoli's Not to Forget. And it makes it a movie you can't forget. This is a fantastic film. So how did Valerio cheat? Well, he got five Academy Award winners in his film, and then he submits for Best Ensemble cast. (laughs) Like anybody had a chance to even win. Um, Now, listen, I'm going to use Valerio as a example here. And and then I'm going to talk about a lot of good things. Um, going forward, we're going to put this in our writing and our rules now going forward. Going forward, if you want your film to be considered in these subcategories, we're going to have to ask everyone to please submit it to a main category. Yeah. If you want an actor to be considered, you're going to need to submit that film to its proper category. And please, please, please include in your cover letter who you want to be nominated for that actor. Um, That is all going to be requirements. Um, Just because it's really not fair to everyone else. If uh, Well, and it's not fair to our time, quite honestly. As it's become, as Indie iFilm Awards has grown, it's just difficult for someone to make a submission to one of these subcategories, and it's a feature-length film, and we have to watch it for consideration for this one particular category, we're going to have to ask everyone to let's use the main filter of submitting to narrative feature or whatever box it fits in, you know, horror, whatever it's in. And then also please include the subcategory. So that's something that we're asking everyone to do from here going forward. And the reason why we couldn't really consider Valerio Zanoli's not to forget into our best feature Uh, category was because he didn't submit for that category but he did submit for two categories one being best ensemble cast which valerio (laughs) you won best ensemble cast for january of 2022 yay um and because casting is directing and you directed the crap out of this film. Really it's did. wonderful. Valerio Zanoli is our best director for January of 2022. Yay. Okay, so here's the synopsis of the film. Now that we've given everything <laughs> away. Um, but after a life of little scams, a self-centered millennial is sentenced to take care of his grandmother, who is affected by Alzheimer's. As he realizes the extent of her wealth the protagonist gets closer to the treasure he's been looking for. (laughs) What a great premise. Yeah. What great casting choices. And the story actually moved. The story actually took you somewhere. The character had an arc. It's like it it checked all the boxes. Right. Beautifully emotional. and. And wow, what obviously what a cast to get to work with and what a what a wonderful story to tell. And it's beautiful and technically it is sound yeah. um, and it's also available on Amazon Prime Video. We're going to put the link to that over at IndieIFilmAwards.com. Highly recommend everyone go check out this film, support your fellow filmmaker and enjoy the heck out of this cast because it's like a treat. It is. So well done, Valerio. Love the film. Your future is bright, and I'll watch your movies anytime, sir. And I think with that, we just got through the entirety of January for what we're able to fit into this episode. So all of our housekeeping plugs, we put those up at the top of the episode, but um, I just want to say one more time, thanks to everybody for the continued support, helping Indie Eye Film Awards grow it's really showing, and it's making us work harder every month. Uh, but we're so happy to do it. So happy to hear from the filmmakers involved. 
and I try to hit on this every time, but if your film didn't get mentioned, if your film didn't get selected, um, and you know, sometimes we do official selections, which are films that make the cut. These are things we were absolutely considering for the categories you nominated in. You know, sometimes they're not a winner. Sometimes they make it over to honorable mention, or sometimes we don't talk about them at all, just time depending. Sometimes you don't hear about them. So if you ever want to know why didn't your film get selected or why did it get selected but it didn't win, if you want any type of feedback, feel free to reach out to us at hello at ndifilmawards.com and just introduce yourself and ask us anything. I will reply to everybody, you know, maybe not instantly, um, but that's kind of the reason why we're here. We want you filmmakers to have some feedback about what you're submitting. So you're not just submitting to a faceless, voiceless, nameless festival, fake yeah. festival that's designed <laughs> to take your money, people, is what I'm saying. We want to turn that back around and give you something for your efforts. Right. If you have any questions, please always feel free to reach out to us. You can follow us at NDI Film Awards. Um, on Instagram, um, please, I guess, the YouTube channel's getting a little bit more yeah. love and support. And, and really, that is the only place to interact with the podcast specifically. That's because true. Because you can't really interact with the audio version of the podcast through the podcasting app. So that is if true. you want to interact with us, definitely listen or watch. You're not going to watch anything, but you know. Yeah, it's just, it. it's just a, uh, a, a, a thumbnail title card yeah. up there. Yeah, just play it, and then that's where you can where you can comment and yeah, and we do read the comments. Absolutely, we, respond. We, we try to stay engaged um, to our NDI folks throughout the month. Yep, on Instagram and on YouTube. And again, thank you to everyone who leaves reviews for NDI Film Awards on Film Freeway. I really think that's that's helping other filmmakers see that. This is a quote unquote legitimate festival, um, but it's something that's unique. Yeah. And, you know, we're a little separated from other film festivals that are just names and submissions and laurels if they happen to keep their schedule. I bet you that's something all indie eye filmmakers that submit to us deal with really crappy festivals elsewhere where the notification date is there and it comes and goes and then gets changed and you don't hear from anybody or then you just get a not selected. Yeah, it's such a roller coaster. Or you get selected and then nothing ever happens. <laughs> <laughs> like So, um, you know, we try to be as transparent as possible and we just try to be this engaging little community where not only do you hearing from us, but you have an opportunity to see the winners page and have links to everyone else who's involved. Yeah, you go support other filmmakers, and learn from make them. connections. Yeah. This is this is your film festival event event. So yeah. we're not in a green room sipping cocktails and eating cheese, but you can go to the winners page at indiefilmawards.com and you can get yourself some cheese from your refrigerator and enjoy this podcast with a snack. Well, yeah, <laughs> yes, you could. We would, but they're not with Sean. And, and the winner for February. Hey, listen. Excuse me, I was chewy. If I could eat while we're doing this podcast, you know I would. <laughs> All right. Well, let's wrap it up. January was an absolute monster. Thank you to everyone for your submissions. The quality was high. Everyone's raising the bar really high. Um, but I want to encourage everyone to submit and check out all the categories please load up your film freeway submission pages with information and links and movie posters and all that stuff so that not only does it help us but these other festivals you may be submitting to have the things to pull from i'm telling you as a person who runs the administration for a film festival give me all the assets give me the materials so that if you are chosen it's easy for me to promote you and what you're doing um, so that's just good advice. I hope everyone has an awesome rest of your day. And we will be back in February. Bye. If you'd like your project discussed on the podcast, go to ndifilmawards.com and submit to our open monthly competition. Find us on Instagram and YouTube, NDI Film Awards. Thanks for listening to this episode of NDI. 